This is Jason Spangler with Wagner Meters, and as you can imagine, daily, monthly, yearly, we get a ton of questions, whether they're in regards to concrete in general and how it dries or how to measure the moisture in it, or about our Rapid RH product line specifically. So what we decided to do is break down a few different videos with, with some of the, the different types of questions that we get on a frequent basis. I just tore up a floor that had no issues. It was adhered to the concrete fine. How am I, now I'm getting ready to install the new flooring and the concrete is testing high RH percentages. How is that possible? Well, what I usually will tell people is that I've seen some of the worst failures on old slabs where the finished floor product has been down and seemed to be perfectly fine. Keep in mind, one of the things that we've changed over the last 15 years even maybe not even that long, is that we've changed product types that are going down on the floor, we've changed adhesives, we've changed all types of things so that you could have a problem that was encapsulated by some of these older products that never came to surface because they weren't affected as much and now as we go to put new stuff on you realize that there is an issue. So even with old slabs you need to be testing diligently. What is the relation of relative humidity to moisture vapor emissions? At the end of the day, there is no correlation. What I like to tell people is, is if you really look at those two different types of test methods, one tests at best the top three quarters of an inch of the slab, and the other one looks at really what's going on inside the slab. And I liken it to this. I ask people, would you prefer to know what's going on right this second on the surface of that slab? Or do you really care about what's going to be on that surface once you actually spend all the time, effort, and money to put the finished floor product and adhesive on top of it? Calcium chloride is going to give you the first. Relative humidity is going to tell you what's going to happen after the fact that you spent all that money. Can I come back after the flooring is installed and recheck the concrete where the origin, original probes were placed? Well, I can tell you this. I can't 100% guarantee that that probe is still going to be uh, active because I don't know what's happened in that concrete to cause an issue because obviously there is an issue if you're going back to read the sensor. But I will tell you this. I have some people out there that will actually floor over the top of the sensor and just leave the cap in place. That way they can come back and check anytime they want. The way the system is designed is that you actually draw a map on your, your, dia your di you diagram a map on all of your records and then once you've made a decision to install the floor, you take a metal disc that comes with every single packet of new smart sensors, you put it in the top of the, of the sensor and you skim coat over the top of it. That way, if there ever is an issue, you can actually find generally the location with the map that you've written and then find the specific location with the metal detector with this disc that's in top, on top. In essence what we've done is we've covered the full circle of accountability and made it so that you can cover yourself to the best of your ability. One of the most frequent questions we get around here is whether or not I truly wear those hideous orange shoes and as you can see by the looks of them I wear them quite often. This is Jason Spangler, signing off.